Hi, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to show you how to edit or change text in Adobe Illustrator. And this is more geared toward people who have downloaded um, a graphic from the internet and it's got text in it that you want to change. Now, I would say 90% of that text is non-editable. So it's been outlined and that means you can't type into it anymore. This is super common. So the way we deal with this is to just delete the text that's there and then type new text in a similar font. So I'm going to show you that way first. The reason um, fonts come like this is because you would have to have that exact same font on your computer for it to look the same. So the designer just outlines it and expects you to put your own font in there. Here's an example of what I mean. I downloaded this business card and it has text. So I want to see if it's editable or not. And to do that, I'm going to hit command Y or control Y on my keyboard. When I do this, it looks like an outline. Normally live text will be filled in like black. It'll look black here, but this is white with a black outline. Hit command Y or control Y to get back. That means that this is outline text that is no longer editable. So in this case, I'll show you how to edit the text here. Now, if you want to use the exact same font, unless you recognize this, you're not going to know the name of that font and you'll need to find the name of the font and download it and then install it on your computer. And you can do this pretty easily with font recognition software, but a lot of times the fonts cost money. So in this example, I'm just going to find a similar font to this and then type my company name. Now, when you're using type, there's area type and point type. Point type is best for a single line of text or a few lines where the size of the text is different on every line. So in this case, we have a small font here and a large font here. So I would use point type. To use point type, you can hit T on your keyboard and that'll bring you to the type tool right here. Then click once on your computer. Do not click and drag or you'll make a little tiny area type, which is not what you want. Now, sometimes you'll just see a flashing cursor, but if you have a newer version of Illustrator, it'll actually put filler text in for you. And I prefer this. You can actually turn it off, but I do prefer the filler text because it's already highlighted and ready to go. If you have a blinking cursor, you can just go ahead and start typing something. So I'm going to put my company name, graphic design, how to. Then I'll click on my selection tool right up here at the top. I'll get in my character panel right up here. And if you're not seeing this, that's under window, type, and character right here. Or you can hit command T or control T on your keyboard. This is probably pretty similar to Helvetica. So I'll put in Helvetica and we'll go with bold. I'm still on my selection tool and I'm just gonna come up here and put the beginning of it right above that C. Then I'll hold shift and I'll get right on the corner of the bounding box and click and drag to make it bigger. If you're not seeing your bounding box, you'll probably need to turn it on, which is shift command B or shift control B on a PC. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And now I wanna change the color to this kind of darker blue. Right now it's black. With it still selected, I can use my eye tool or eyedropper tool. You can get to that by hitting the letter I on your keyboard or coming right down here to the eyedropper tool. With this still selected, you can click on the blue in company name and now it's changed it to that. The next step is to delete company name. And right now I can't click on it, so it must be locked. To unlock all, you can hit Option Command 2 or Alt Control 2 on a PC or come up here to Object Unlock All right here. But this is showing that there's nothing locked, so that isn't the problem. Next I need to check my layers, so I'll hit F7 to bring up my layers panel. And here we can see that it's been locked at the layer level. So I'm going to unlock this one and unlock this layer. Now if I click on company name and slogan, I can select them and delete them. But I think I'll use my group selection tool, which is right down here, to click once on the E, click again to select more of the group, and then click again to select even more of the group until I get what I need and then just delete that. That way I can still see what my slogan looks like. I'll get back on my selection tool and I'm just gonna click and drag this down. Next, I wanna replace my slogan. So I'll hit T again to get on my text tool. I'm going to click once for point type without dragging. If you accidentally click and drag, you're going to end up with a tiny box 
that is not a good thing. If that happens, just hit Control Z or Command Z to undo. Okay, so I got off of this. Now I need to get back in here so I can type. So to do that, I can just click with my text tool right over here. Just click inside the word, and then I usually just do Control A or Command A to select the whole thing. I'm gonna change my font to Helvetica Light, and then I'll add my slogan here. Now you can also change the color by just selecting all the text with your text tool and then clicking on your eyedropper tool and clicking on the blue text. If you want a completely different color, you can come over here and double click on your color and just change that to anything you like. Now I need to delete slogan here, so I'll click on that and delete it. And I'm going to move this up with the selection tool and I'll get on the edge, hold shift and resize it. If you want to center these on the page, you can select one with the selection tool, hold shift and select the other one. I'm gonna get on my group selection tool and I'm just gonna click the edge of that business card. So now we have this, this, and the business card selected. Then I'll get on my V tool, that's the selection tool, and I'm going to click once right on the edge. That gives us a key object, something to align to. So right now we're aligning to the business card. And I'm gonna come back down here and choose align, and then we'll do the horizontal align center. And now we're good to go. I'll skip the website because it's the same process as these two. Now I'll hold spacebar and click and drag so we can move to this part of the business card. For these four sections, I would use area type. Area type is best when you have several lines and they're the same font and size. It just helps with spacing a lot to use area type. So I'm gonna hit T and I'll click and drag and make a box about the size of that area there. I want this to be Helvetica Light, and this one I want to be right justified, so I'm going to choose that, and we'll make it quite a bit smaller. I'm gonna make it 10 points. It might be a little too small. In the character panel, I'm gonna come over here and choose Show Options, and then I'm also going to make this all caps. Maybe we do want it a little bit smaller. I'll put it down at 10. So here I'll type my city address. Then I'm gonna hit Command A or Control A so I can change the font. It's a little too light, so I think I'll go regular with this. Then I'll click on my selection tool right up here at the top. Now I can move it down where the other one was. And then I'll hide it with Command 3 or Control 3. Now I'll use my group selection tool to draw a box around this text. But when I try to do that, I'm actually pulling this black background. So I'll hit Control Z or Command Z to undo. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y, which makes it easier to select things. So I'll go ahead and select that text now and just delete it. Then I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. And then I'll unhide with Object Show All, which is Option Command 3 or Alt Control 3. Now I want a little more space between these. So I'm gonna hold Option and then hit the down arrow, and this will change the space between them. This looks pretty good. And I'm going to move this up just a little bit so it's underneath the text. Now for the rest of these, we can just make a copy of this, which has everything set up correctly, and then type into it. So I'll hold Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt on a PC, and I'll click and drag this to make a copy below. I'll hide that with Command 3 or Control 3. Then I'm gonna hit Command Y or Control Y, use my group selection to draw a box around this text and delete it. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back, and then I'll hold Option Command 3 or Alt Control 3 to show everything that I hid. It's the same as going to Object Show All right here. And here I want my email address. So to get into this area type box, I can hit T to get to my type tool, and then I'll double click inside there, which should get me into the text box. And then I'll hit Command A or Control A to select all. Now I'll put my email address. And it's pretty long, so it's wrapping. And that's the thing about area type. Point type is one line and it will continue on and on until you hit enter or return. But area type, it'll wrap when it hits the edge of the box. It's actually a nice thing. So I need to adjust this. I'll get back on my selection tool and select it. I'll get right on the edge of the bounding box. I'm just gonna pull it out until there's enough space. And then I'll just move this anchor point up. 
And I'll use my arrows to move it down a little bit to be centered with the icon. Now I'll do the same thing with the phone numbers. Now I'm still on my selection tool. I'll click this and I'll hold shift and option to drag it down here and get it pretty much where I want it using the arrow keys. Then I'll hide it with command three or control three. Now I need to delete this and if I try to do it, it's all grouped with this. So I'll hit command Y or control Y. I'll get on my group selection tool and I'll just select this text and delete it. I'll hit command Y or control Y to get back. And then I'll hit option command three or alt control three on a PC to show everything I hid. I'll hit T to get on my text tool and then I'll double click in here. I'll select all with command A or control A and then I'm gonna enter my two phone numbers. We'll put, and we'll also do, now the nice thing about copying it from up here, the spacing is already correct between them and they match. They're the right font and the right color and everything. And then for the website, I'll use this one since it's already one line. I'll click and drag holding shift and option or shift and alt on a PC. I'll hide it with command three or control three. I'll hit command Y or control Y. And then I'm gonna get on my group selection tool and I'll select this and delete it. Command Y or control Y to get back. And then unhide all or show all with option command three or alt control three. And we'll put graphic design how to dot com. And then you can click off to the side to deselect. So that's the difference between area type and point type. Your area type will have a box and it'll make the text wrap when it hits the box. And then point type, it'll just keep typing off to the side unless you hit enter or return. Now, sometimes you'll download a graphic that does have live typable text in it, but you probably, you know, chances are you won't have the font on your computer. So it'll look funny when you pull it up in Illustrator. Now there are two options. You can just go ahead and change the font to something new, or you can try to find the font and install it on your computer and then change the text. I'm going to open this cloud storage graphic. And when I do, we automatically get this text box that says there are missing fonts. The font that's missing, the name of it is Canit Regular, and it's actually an Adobe font. I'm going to close this. I could activate this font, uh, then it would look all nice, but I wanna show you what to do if it's not an Adobe font. So we'll close this. Then all your text is going to have these pink boxes around it, and the text itself, it probably just won't look very good. So I wanna show you how to find and install the font if you need it. But first, let's see what's editable text and what isn't by hitting Command Y or Control Y. Okay, so the cloud storage and all of this text here is editable. And you can tell because it's not outlined. It is a black font. Um, this down here is outlined and we can't type into this. So if you wanted to replace this, you would need to um, do the process that I just showed you, deleting it and adding new text. Let's hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. Okay, with my selection tool, I'm gonna to click on this first line of text and it looks like it's selected the whole thing. And this is something that is very common. It just means it's grouped. And so you can see right up here in the upper left of your screen, it says group. So we need to ungroup this design. So I'll hit Shift Command G or Shift Control G to ungroup it. Now you can also go to Object Ungroup right here. And you can see that keyboard shortcut, Shift Command G or Shift Control G here too. Okay, let's click off on the edge and then try again. Okay, this time I only have the first text box selected. And we can see up here in the control panel, um, as I mentioned before, control panel is available right here. But up here it says the font is Canit Regular. So we can go out to Google Chrome and I'm going to do a search for Canit Regular font. And it turns out that this Canit Regular is a Google font. Google fonts are open source, which means they're free to use even in commercial projects. So that is really awesome. So I click the Google fonts link and now I can download this family. And here is the Canit font. It'll come in as a zip folder. So you can right click this and choose either extract or just open. And then you'll get a folder that looks like this with all of these Canit files in it. I'm going to highlight all of these 
and then right click and choose either open or install. If you're on a Mac, you'll get something like this and then you can just click install font. If you're on a PC, it should just install them right then. So now Canit Regular is installed. And if we go back to our Adobe Illustrator file, you can see it looks a lot better. All the pink boxes are gone and now our font looks like it's supposed to basically. So now we can just type into this font. To do that, you can either get on your selection tool and double click, and that'll actually bring you to the text tool and put you inside that text box. Then you can hit Control A or Command A to select all, and then retype whatever you want. To type in here, since you're already in your text box, all you have to do is click right on that. Now if it's locked, it won't allow you to get into the text box. So you can either go to Object, Unlock All right here, or you can hit F7 to bring up your Layers panel and unlock it right here. Window Layers is another way to get to your layers. I've got my cursor in here and I'm just going to hit Control A or Command A to select all of this and we'll just type our paragraph. And since this is typable, it'll keep whatever color it had. If we wanted to change this, we could select all and then come over here to our color, double click the color box. Uh, maybe we'll choose one that's just a little darker and say okay. Then when we get back on our selection tool and click off to the side, you can see what that will look like. To get into this plan section, since I'm on my selection tool, I'll double click and then select all with Control A or Command A. And I'll change this to buy now. I'll click over here, Command A or Control A to select all. I'll type free trial. So now we're ready to go, but I want to make sure that these lines of text are um, centered on the page. So I'll select this. I'll hold shift and select this one. We'll come down here to align. We've already got it set to align to the artboard. And now I'll choose horizontal align center. And they are perfectly aligned already, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's take a look at what types of text are in this design. So if we hit Command Y or Control Y, we can see we have point type here. You can see there's no box around it. This one is area type. And then these, you'd probably think these are area type, but they're not. These boxes are actually rectangles that were drawn around these to look like buttons. So this is point type. And you can tell by just selecting the type itself, there's no box around it except for obviously the bounding box. And this makes sense because this is just one line, these are just one line, but this is several lines that we want to wrap. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. Now I notice that these two are not centered on the page. So if we select them by getting our selection tool, clicking one and holding shift and clicking the other, and then aligning them, it's just going to align them both together. So I'm going to undo. So I want to select this whole thing and then align it. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to do that. And I can do that easily with my selection tool in this view. It's hard to tell right now, but I do have them selected. I'm going to group them now with Command G or Control G. And now they'll all move as one piece. I'll hit Command Y or Control Y to get back. And then I'm going to come down here to the line and align to center. So now these are aligned too, and they look much better. So that's how to edit text when you have typable text. Another scenario where you might need to edit text is you inherit a file from another designer. And usually this will come as a packaged file. So I wanted to show you what to do in that case. When you download the packaged file, it'll probably come as a zip file. So right click that and choose open or extract to unzip it. Then inside, you'll have a fonts folder and you'll also have the design. So when I open the design, we have that same problem. We have a font that's missing. I'm going to close that. And then we have these pink boxes that show a font is missing. So all we need to do is double click that font that they gave us, install it. On a PC, you might have to right click and choose install or something like that. And now when we go back to our Illustrator file, our font has come in and we can easily click inside here and then edit it like we did in the last example. All right, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you want to see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it and you'll be notified um, whenever a new video comes out. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.